who sees me get shot and also watches all of the Afghans run away as fast as they can, um, runs up to the, to this depression and he throws a grenade down there. Well, you would think with that small area, a grenade is a great choice. And, and you, that would be right to think that with the amount of large rocks that were down there, more than likely the rocks are, are, or would be that guy's friend. I'm sure that grenade landed right behind, and you can see it in, in, in the video that we have of it, that it looks like it just landed on the other side of a rock, and a rock shielded him completely from the grenade. But what it did do is it reminded him that he has a grenade. And so he throws a grenade back. Right after that one went off, just a couple seconds later, we get a grenade back. And he blindly throws this grenade just in the direction we're in, and I hear this loud thunk, just this thud of what sounds like a grenade hitting the mud about just a couple feet away from my head. And again, it's just crazy some of the things you think about. I remember thinking, man, that sounds like a grenade. And then I remember thinking, you don't know what a grenade sounds like hitting the mud. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? And they're like, well, what else could it be? And I'm like having this, like, this conversation. Then I remember thinking, well, it it should have gone off by now. So it's not a grenade. And as soon as I start to, to, to kind of do a sit up and finally get up, cause I'm thinking, well, well, it's time to get up and probably fight for your life. Like maybe not just lay, lay here. And, uh, and as soon as I go to sit up is exactly when it went off and it, and it goes off and it tears my peltors, my hearing protection off my, you know, I got shrapnel on my helmet. I have scars on my face and, uh, shr- you know, shrapnel goes into my leg, it goes into my kneecap it peppers me really good, but my arm hurt so bad because I'm trying to get up and move right now. I actually didn't know a thing hit me. I was like, Ooh, I laid down really quick as, as if, as if that was going to save me. The grenade had already gone off. There's no reason to lay back down. And, uh, so I laid down real quick and I kind of self assessed myself. I was like, I can't believe none of that hit me. That's amazing. Um, I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> So the, at, at this point they start, uh, um, in fact, at this point, one, one of my teammates finally runs up and actually this guy's trying to get out on the backside and run away. And, uh, so he gets, he gets gunned down and finally, you know, this, this episode is over and really what should have been, uh, just another easy, uh, somewhat easy night. Just, it just turns, just turn into kind of a fiasco. And, uh, now, um, part of when he was spraying and it hit me, it also hit our comma guy and our comma guy gets shot in the leg and he has a through and through shot. Didn't hit his bone, but he has a through and through shot. So now we have a very small patrol half a mile away. Two guys are shot. One guy's badly wounded. And one guy doesn't have nods me on one of the darkest of nights. And I end up having, and now we're trying to get this battered and beaten patrol back to the main element. I can't see a thing with my good arm. I have to hold on to the guy in front of me because I can't see my hand in front of my face. It is that dark. Um, you know, we, we put a tourniquet on it. The tourniquet was way worse than getting shot. A tourniquet is the most painful thing you will ever have put on you in your life. Especially when you have to walk for about 30 to 40 minutes before you even get on the helicopter. Um, we have fentanyl lollipops that are supposed to help, you know, with the pain, um, I ate my fentanyl. I la- I ate everyone's fentanyl lollipop in the patrol. It did not help with my pain. Um, and as we're getting closer, um, I start feeling like I'm going to throw up and black out. And I told the guys, I'm like, Hey, we, we got to stop for a second. Like we, I'm, I'm about to throw up and pass out. And they're like, Brent, we're almost there. Like, you know, and I'm probably 30 pounds heavier at the time. And they're like, we cannot carry you. Like, do not do this to us. And I'm like, well, this isn't, this isn't my, it's not my choice guys. Yeah. What I didn't know was that grenade had hit me and we didn't do a good job of fully checking myself out. And I was, I was bleeding to death and I didn't even know it. So when we finally get up about five more minutes to the actual patrol and the medics, the medics look over me and, um, and he's like, Hey Brent, what's, yeah. How, how, how's your night? I'm like, well, well, not, not too good. I'm shot. He's like, yeah, I can see that. He goes, you got a bunch of blood on your leg. What else happened? I said, well, that's how gravity works, Dan. It, blood falls from my arm and it hits my leg. 
and he puts his thumb kind of right near or in that gr- massive like hole in my leg from the grenade. And I'm like, damn, that hurts. Why'd you do that? He's like, you dumbass. Did you get hit by a grenade? I'm like, how'd you know? He goes, because you have shrapnel all over your leg and holes in your pants. So the the coolest part about that story, besides all that, is this. The helicopters didn't exactly know what was going on, and they knew that we they had two guys hurt, and they knew if they went back and refueled like they needed to, that they would have probably... They were scared it had been too late by the time they got back, and they would have been right. I probably would have bled out had they not got back in time. And so um, those guys set those those helicopters down in a random field near us in Afghanistan, and, and they just got out and pulled security. Um, and you want to talk about a ballsy move to set down a multi-multi-multi-million-dollar piece of equipment in the middle of the field in Afghanistan – and just get out and decide to pull your own security because you want to be there when the guys are bloodied up and coming back. You want to be there the moment they get back so you can get them back to, you know, to medical assistance without a second to lose. It's, you want to talk about humbling. That was, those guys saved my life. So that was, that was, uh, I passed out on the helicopter on the way back. Woke up the next day in uh, in the hospital, went to Germany, went to D.C., you know, eventually made it to Bragg, and I can't remember the exact number now anymore. Eight or nine surgeries later, they, they finally saved my arm. It's an unbelievable story, man. I, I guess one question just to recap in total. Did... Were you guys ever able to confirm if that group was? Oh, yeah. Caught? Yes. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's an important part that. of that story. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. So you still got that campfire story. (laughs) I was not at the campfire that night. Yeah.